The Namib Nakluif National Park is the biggest conservation area in Africa, and by size, it's the fourth largest park in the world. But at its heart is what is considered to be the most ancient desert in the world, the Namib. It's a desert whose story actually begins with a powerful river in the heart of Southern Africa. For millions of years, the Orange River has been grinding her way down to the west coast of Southern Africa, depositing massive amounts of sediment into the mighty Atlantic Ocean, where then the Benguela current picks it up and carries the sediment northwards along the coast and deposits it on the shore, where winds pick it up and push it inland, forming giant sentinels that have been marching inland for hundreds and thousands of years, eventually forming this great dune sea that is the Namib Desert. It's another beautiful part of Southern Africa. So it should come as no surprise that it also marks the start of the eighth leg of an epic 70 day, 9,000 kilometer road trip that makes up the toughest outdoor based cooking competition that you've ever seen. We've been on the road since 7.30 this morning and it is now one o'clock. Not sure where we're going. Where that road is leading, I have no idea. I'm just following the car in front of me and enjoying the absolute beauty of this desert that's changing every couple of kilometers. I mean, this place is just mesmerizing. 15 teams started this journey and already seven teams' epic journeys have come to an end. And right now, the remaining teams are making their way from Luderitz on the west coast to the Saucers Flay Lodge on the edge of this desert after two tough challenges in the previous leg. In the first one, teams had to prepare 100 snook, aka snake mackerel, for 450 local school children. For the group that was led by Rod and Leslie of Team Tenacity, a sterling performance meant that all teams in that group earned the right to fight for the first reward challenge of the game. A fast forward into the ninth leg and an as yet undisclosed experiential reward. And four superb dishes from tongue and cheek meant that Penny and Dee took all the rewards. I think the, the reward is absolutely beautiful, whatever it is. But I think the big thing is that we, you know, we get through to the next round. I, I mean, that's just the cherry on top. Now the game is back on, but we're only five weeks through a nine week journey through some of the most beautiful and harsh terrain that Southern Africa has to offer. Part running water, bed, a bath. Your shower, shower is like a nothing now, bath is a luxury. This is like a oasis on its own. We've been driving eight hours to finally arrive and be here. It's just insane. <laughs> Yo, my man, I actually feel emotional. I'm going to do it. Bathroom? Bathroom? I'm bathing for six hours. Delighted. Delighted to the core of my being is how I feel right now. And there are still six legs to go before the final challenge. And if teams are beginning to think that just maybe they have a chance to take the title, the car and the cash, well, they still have to survive the next set of challenges that I have in store for them on the edge of the Namib Desert, in a place where you're surrounded by these immense dunes, some of the highest in the world. Good morning, teams. I'd like to officially welcome you all to the Sausage Flay Lodge on the edge of the Namib Nakluif National Park. 
Namibia. And as I promised you in the last leg, I would take you from under the stars and give you four stars. And here we are. And as promised, Penny and Dee, it's time to tell you what your award is. Standing next to me is Mardis from Desert Air. This morning, you're going to be in his capable hands. He's been flying since 2008. He's going to be putting you into one of his Cessna Centurions, 211s, flying you down to Swakopmund, where we'll be spending a night, courtesy of Teleni Africa, at the Hotel Zumkaiser. Lap of luxury again, a little bit of pampering, and then the next morning, you're going to climb back on that same plane, and you're going to fly to Tosha, to the Tosha village, <laughs> luxury tented camp where you will spend two nights in one of the best parks in the world. Oh, wow! <laughs> yeah, go! <laughs> but here's the sad part. When you get back in the next leg, one team standing here right now, well, their journey would have come to an end. All right, ladies, join Mardis. Have fun. Okay. fun. Let me take that. Thanks so much. Sure. Which leaves me with the seven of you. You already know that one team's journey is going to come to an end at the end of this leg. But before then, I have a little surprise for you guys as well. But this evening, there will be a little dinner for you out in the desert where you get to have dinner under the stars, courtesy of the Sausage Flay Lodge. And I promise you there's no challenge this evening, but tomorrow, game on. So emotional about where we're going to Etosha and to Swakop. Never been to Etosha, so I'm very, very excited. Never seen Sosa Slay, I've never been to Swakop Wind, and I've never been to Etosha. Just achieve all three things in a weekend. I mean, that you couldn't ask for more. Oh, Dee, we've got a bath. This is, is beautiful, amazing little town. The most incredible day, from me thinking we might be lucky and get a bath in our room somewhere, to taking an, an aeroplane, having the most exquisite views of the desert. And we're at the, the top of the hotel, just looking out on the beautiful architecture of Swakop, right into the sea. I don't know why we're getting spoiled so much, man. What did we do to deserve this? You know, having a sundowner up on the rocks here in the middle of the Namib Desert. Very honored to be here uh, with, with all these friends that we've made along the way. So enjoy it while it lasts because tomorrow's another day. <laughs> they treat you well before they torture you, so we're expecting something tomorrow, you know? Every step's been amazing, so I'm sure whatever Justin has thought up is going to be challenging and bring a whole new dimension to the trip. Sitting up here on the top deck of the hotel, having sundowners and snacks, I think we've actually got the better end of the deal. Huh? For sure. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Look how good that looks. Sure, look at this. Oh, sure, look at the setting. It's spectacular, guys. Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, darling. Cheers. We in Saucy's Play Dinner Camp. It's a setting of note. It must have taken these wonderful people hours to set up. Breathtaking, I mean, absolutely unbelievable. I feel like a king. Teams, ladies and gentlemen, my esteemed colleagues, Batis and Petrus, I'd like to thank you all for being here this evening with me. Tonight comes with a caveat. You are part of the final eight teams in the competition, and the game actually has just changed. From here on onwards, you're fighting head to head against each other. There are no more group challenges. There is no space for anyone to hide anymore. Main challenge tomorrow, elimination challenge the following day. If you don't get through the elimination challenge, you're going home and then there will only be seven teams. You may all be friends right now, 
but this is where you've got to turn into competitors because ultimately only one team will walk away with a half a million rand. The Renault Duster, the title, and the week in India with me. However, tonight, courtesy of Sausage Fair Lodge, enjoy this beautiful evening under the stars. And I'd like to just tell you all one more little bit of information. The main challenge tomorrow, the reward is a fast forward into the 10th leg. Oh. So, that's top six and another surprise for the winning team in the main challenge tomorrow. Worth fighting for. I expect the gloves are going to come off and the teeth will be bared because tomorrow the games begin in earnest. Teams, that was our grand entrance. Let's hope one of you is not going to exit in a similar style. The eight finalists left in the game, seven of those teams are standing here right now. The other one is swallowing its way through to Atosha right now, enjoying that bush experience courtesy of Tulane, Africa. Today is a main challenge day. Seven teams competing for reward. You know it's a fast forward straight through into the 10th leg. I'm not gonna tell you what you're fighting for quite yet, but I can promise you it's worthwhile. Two teams will go into the elimination challenge out of the tail end of today. By now, you must be itching to know what you're going to be doing. So today, your challenge is quite simple. In one and a half hours, you have to prepare a composed dish using venison as the hero. Guys, so coming from Africa, it means that game and venison meat is really high priority for us to cook with. All venison tastes different. The smaller animals, usually slightly more gamey, and the larger animals, usually a bit milder. The next thing you've got to keep in mind is what we usually cook with venison. So close, for example, with venison is fantastic. Acidity is great. So a bit of pickled cabbage, those sort of flavors. So you've got some wonderful options to look at to cook us one composed dish. A composed dish consists of starch, veg, and a protein. With uh, starch, you can use pup, you can use potatoes and risotto, but it has to be creamy and also lots of flavor. With the vegetables, I need lazy. But remember, presentation, I eat with my eyes, and we do not take any prisoners. There's a fully stocked pantry, all the herbs and spices that you would need courtesy of Robertson's, and you only have one and a half hours for this challenge. Yusuf and Steven smiling from ear to ear. You've had a lovely day off in Sossesfle. You've got to experience the best of what this place has to offer. And if you don't perform well today, tomorrow you're into an elimination challenge and your epic road trip can come to an end. And guys, I know the route we've still got to follow. No one wants to go home at this point. All right, teams, you all know what you're fighting for. We're going to find a nice shady spot. But before we get kicking, I'd like every team to choose a station. OK, starting from my right. Open your pot. Reveal to us what game you are going to be cooking. Zebra. Eerland. Springbok. Wildebeers. Oryx. Impala. <laughs> OK, teams, just think about Penny and D swanning it right now in Natasha while you are slaving under the African sun because your hour and a half starts right now. This challenge is beautiful. We were looking forward to a challenge like this, but uh, we seem to differ with my partner, so we're going to go slightly Indian style. We're busy with our venison challenge. we got springbok to prepare. We're going to do a springbok fillet, and then we're going to make a polenta with parmesan cheese, butternut, carrots, citrus. I find the challenge quite challenging. It's not something we cook every day. So it's when you love food, I think that's the thing that really transpires the food dish. And we're hoping that we have the right recipe, I think we do. I will try so it's Elan. We're going more Indian Asian style. So we've got to change our game plan a little. So it can go anyway. The proof is in the food.
How's it going, guys? So you guys have got an hour and a half to give us a beautiful plate of composed game. So what's the plan? I kind of got this idea that we can do a beautiful duo of mash on one side like a dune and a mash or potato, which I'm <laughs> going to truffle slightly. I'd like to and see I'm... that. <laughs> yeah, the dune. Make sure it's beautiful, clean food, just delicious, seasoned well, yes. and well presented flavours. Chippy. Oh my goodness. It's it's co coriander. Yeah. yeah, I've got coriander, mm -hmm. some juniper berries, some chili flakes, mm. salt and sugar, and a bit of olive oil in there. With that, I'm making an a onion marmalade sauce, and we've got some carrots and butternuts in there. That's what you're going to do with the citrus sauce. And I've got some cheesy polenta going there. That's going to be challenging, I think. Hey? Hour and a half is quite short. Yeah, do that. Good luck to Pete. Thank you. Smiley, how a good compost dish for us today? On the Oryx side, I'm going to actually cut it into medallions, which is very thin medallions, and just pan fried. Sh sh you know, it's actually called the ultimate brine master. Are you happy with pan searing the meat? Do you think you're going to get some good flavour in there? I uh, see your point on that one. A bit of smokiness and yeah, a bit yeah, of those, yeah. those sort of flavours. Okay. Let it rest, carve it, then present it. It'll even look better. How are you doing, impression? I can see we've got some vegetables. Is that a stir fry or what? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, more like What are you doing with the meat, bud? Also stir fry it? Uh, no. No. Um, medium yeah. rare, done you on the flame. Quite, you, cut it quite, you cut it quite small for medium rare. You're going to have to be quite careful, huh? Yeah. All right, and then your starch? Uh, smash potato. And mash with uh, some cheese. Guys, good luck. Bushies, what's your plan? So it's a very gamey meat, so we're going to make a biltong sauce to go okay. with it as well. You don't think it's going to be too spicy? So just, just watch so it doesn't become too... Dangerous. Too strong, too many spices. Do you go, boys? OK, guys, so we've got our hopes for you today, because this is apparently what you do. Because they're wearing jackets today. We get it now. Basically, we're going to do a spice crust for the, for the beers. Cool, it smells delicious, huh? Oh, I like that coriander, man. And then the starch component will be South African pumpkin fritters. Nice, man. It sounds awesome, huh? OK, cool, guys. We'll see you later. Sugar and spice. Guys, so you drew zebra. Yes. That's yeah. quite a challenge. Have you cooked it before? No. no. OK. It's like any other game. Just keep it nice and pink for us. Don't dry it out. Make sure it's delicious. Any rub with that? Yes, what we've done is we've gone the herby garlic root with balsamic Whoa. and we're marinating it. Should I take another smell? Well, we, yeah, what we plan to do is put in the grill as a whole fillet and then take it off once we've browned on the outside, cut it into slices and then grill the slices individually. Right, what's the starch, guys? Well, um, guys, let me just quickly interrupt. You've now only got 45 minutes left. You're halfway through the challenge. I'd get cracking if you haven't been cracking already. Mashed potatoes. Today is a fight for the mash. There's four other teams, four teams in total doing mash today, huh? OK, great. Awesome. OK. Cool, guys, good luck, huh? Thank you. Judges came, they were a bit sceptical with our dried up. We're sticking to the plan of the dry rub. We're going to put it on the fire. We're doing it the, the Impala Carpaccio style. So it's a red, medium red. We're going to it together. We're going to spend quite a lot of time dressing this plate because that's really what we need to do. We need to sell the food by sight and we're taking from the environment is, is how we're going to try and dress this plate up. We'd like to get a free ride up front. We missed the last one by one salty oyster. We're not going to let this happen to us this time. So we're at the Sussles Play Lodge today. Because we're in game country, we're awesome to cook game. And we're going to be getting four different mashes and one stir fry so far. And interesting, interesting. Yeah. But I must be honest with the mash. You know a good mash, yeah. and I expect the same. And the mash from a fire can just be a recipe for disaster, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Nobody's using pastry, nobody's doing anything out of the ordinary. A bit worried that they're not pushing themselves, you know? Yeah. But I've seen that um, the Tika boys, they're actually trying like today is like their day. So I'm a bit concerned about some of the teams. Some of the flavors sound nice, some of the rubs smell very nice. But we're going to have to wait and taste this one, eh? Seven teams, two going into elimination tomorrow, one going home. And the proof is where? Always in the pudding, mate. Well, teams, I suggest you listen up. You've got less than half your time left, and I've just had a powwow with the judges, and I don't think they're that impressed with what you're putting on the plate, considering that you are the final eight. If you're sure that you're on the money with what you're offering, carry on. If you're feeling any sense of angst or anxiety, I suggest you change what you're doing. 
We're gonna cook our socks off because if we think about the reward what tongue and cheek is having at the moment, we're gonna try our best. Just gone into the gates of the Atosha Game Reserve and so there's a lot of excitement about. It's incredible, we've just seen two lions running across the road, like you could sort of reach out and go, hello, hello, Betty, Betty. And then two seconds later, this entire breeding herd of elephants just come out of the bush. It's absolutely amazing. There's a rhino! There's a rhino! Stop, rhino. stop, stop! stop. <gasps> the one thing you've always wanted to see. <laughs> she can't talk. <laughs> Nice. Oh, go away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. It's taken a million pictures, of which two might work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how fantastic. No, I think it's the same because it's either potato or pumpkin. No, no, it needs to be potato and no, no, pumpkin. No, you can't. You have to have a starch. How would the pumpkin become a starch? This I think the pumpkin should be a vegetable. No, I think if you're going to do then do what you think, so. Actually, really, I don't know. No, it's an interesting challenge, especially since we all got different types of venison. And as they say, they want a complete dish or a rounded dish with, you know, a starch veg. Ben! He's done Roger me from behind like that. In amongst this chaos, it looks like you're all beginning to run, which is a good thing, because you now only have 15 minutes left. And some of you look like you're in trouble, so let's hope you can pull it together in these last moments before you have to serve the judges. So it's been a while. We have a bit of a fluffy at each other, but that's how we roll, Vienna. Oh, we take you a bit astray and trying to decide if we're forgetting something. So we can be assessing the situation all the time and getting ready for the mad panic when we remember what we've forgotten. Yes! You made a f***ing lot of <laughs> We're trying to keep on time, yeah? Everything's about a chase in time. We've both cooked a lot of venison in our town. It's making it perfect. That's the trick. I've got to tell you something. Cooking around this fire. It's very, very hot and very racy. Everybody's running around like mad rabbits. It feels almost like we're in, a, in an ant nest at this stage. As this ant is now going to leave, I have to get out here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you think this is hell, cooking in the desert under the African sun, I have some more bad news for you because you have 10 minutes left and your meat should be resting already and you should be thinking about plating. A whiskey infused I'm trying to make mashed potatoes. The, the potatoes aren't quite as smooth as they should be, so it's quite tricky. We just need the meat to get done. It's not busy brine. Killers out here today in the Namib Desert to eat and helping it all in. I'm trying to create a dew. This last 10 minutes is so difficult. I'm trying to do make a little mould for the mash. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Frenetic. Teams, I have to give you some more news. Mixed masala is already ready to serve the judges. The rest of you look like you might be in trouble, but you now have less than five and a half minutes left to complete your dishes. Which team is not going to do their food justice today and will be in the eliminations tomorrow? Hey guys, how are you doing? Hi, good yourself. Cool, done on time? Yes. Awesome. Tell us, what did you make for us today? That's Eland. Are you happy with this? We have confident. Cool, guys, thank you very much. We'll have a, we'll have a chat. OK, thanks. Sure. Petrus, it looks a bit rough, my bro. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. A good piece of eland, they cut it to strips. Yeah. We did it our style. I hope they're happy. But I know it was a bit on the hot side. My tummy is all queasy inside because... It's got butterflies. I, I want to know, I want to know now. <laughs> If we actually wanted the stuff, we would have maybe given them strips of this and that. Yeah. Great flavours. Unfortunately, completely overcooked. Obviously, because it's so small, it, I think it's the worst dish that they've delivered in the competition so far. All right, teams, Tippy and Santi are ready to serve the judges. Means they are second up. The rest of you only now have three minutes left. Tippy. Hello, Santi. 
you know, I like um, the fact that it, it's got a sauce. Everything came out well. The spring rock fillets are so small. We might have overcooked them a little bit. I'm a little bit worried about that. The flavors work quite well together. The only thing that put me off is just the, the sweetness of the vegetables. It's a bit over them. Yeah, over. Good effort. Good effort. Sugar and Spice has called it. They're the third team up. Ticker boys, you've called it. Fourth, fifth team. And the rest of you have less than a minute and a half to finish it off. Hello, ladies, how are you doing? I'm thanks to you. I'm oh, cool, thank you very much. So, Petrus, we're moving on swiftly to the African horse. The, the zebra. zebra. No, the African striped horse, mate. Zebra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the meat looks nicely cooked. Mashed potatoes looks creamy enough. But I'm concerned about the vegetables, well, man. We did not give them only onions. It was not just a mystery <laughs> box where we got onion and a piece of meat. We gave them a pantry of peck and pay. An amazing pantry. Beautiful. Full of textures and flavours. We've got a good feeling and I think we cooked with passion today. So I, I think we'll be fine. I must be I'm pretty disappointed then. I think it's sad that the nicest thing on the plate is the, the mashed potato. Gentlemen, how are you doing? Very well. Awesome, I'm popping a bit. Good, well, yes. Cool, guys, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. I like the colours. Yeah, they've used almost uh, the whole pantry. Yeah. The rub they've used with the cumin seeds and the fenugreek on the, on the meat is really good. I wouldn't have put the pumpkin fillets underneath the meat. They need to sort of stay dry, but well caramelised, super cooked. Great effort. All right, that's five, four, three, two, and one. Congratulations, ladies and gents. Hey, Rod. Hello, Hello Leslie. How are you doing? Hi. Sure, Petra said we've got a bit of a yin yang happening of game here. I love, I love <laughs> that tells the story. <laughs> but I think the story is being told but heavily here, to be honest with you. It's a good effort. Everything is well seasoned. The dry, the dry rub is delicious. The wet rub isn't that good. Beans are undercooked. Beetroot is burnt. So, a, a plate of highs and lows, I'm afraid. That's it, man. There you go. Well, how was your. <laughs> <laughs> It's for me and you, man. It's two portions, yeah. No, it's definitely, it's definitely PE portions. It's PE, hey? Yeah, yeah it's PE portions, man. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Sure, Pete, you know what, buddy? That is butt ugly. We managed to crack a huge laugh from both of the judges as we presented it to them. Not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. I always like it when food makes sense when you eat it. This makes no sense to me. Mm. That's good mesh. Very tasty. Yet again, unfortunately, the nicest thing on the plate is the mashed potato. They don't work in harmony. Not at all. It doesn't look like it's harmonious. It doesn't taste like it's harmonious. It looks like a crown. Which is... How was your day, guys? It's uh, Is there any reason why you've served us the smallest portion of Impala ever? 100 grams of everything together in the plate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even 60 grams of meat, no. No, 100 grams of everything together. Yeah, I know, it is. I can see that. Is that is a standard Wait. portion? Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Petrus. I am disappointed. Yes. Where is the meat? It's not as much a composed plate of food as it could be a composed canapé. For me, this is not like a baby spinach, you know what I mean? The baby spinach, you can just wilt it for two seconds or three minutes. The dishes that we just had, I haven't seen even one dish that is a crack up. Obviously, so we need to pick two teams to go into elimination tomorrow morning. It's going to be super easy to do today because it was a lot of, <laughs> a lot of rubbish. And then we need to pick one winner. Well, teams, here we are as the sun sets on another beautiful day in Namibia. And I must just tell you all a little small truth. Only two teams standing here this evening performed well enough to impress the judges. If we could put four teams in tomorrow's elimination challenge, we could do it in a heartbeat. You guys have got to realize that you're not in bigger groups anymore. You're individual teams now, and you can't hide. So we're going to pick out the weak ones very quickly. Bushies. A scraping of meat, oversweet carrots, boiled spinach, weak sauce. Leslie, thanks for the dunes, but unimpressed completely. A very composed dish will be your starch, your veg, a piece of meat, and a sauce. That is it. And what we've seen today it was just not up to standard. What did you think of mixed masala? You know, there's a, a show in, in, in the UK, it's called 30 Minute Meal. It's only for people who go home for lunch and they want something quick. And that was your dish, guys. You know, you didn't put any effort into that dish. It's stir fry. It'll give you a good piece of meat. You cut it up into strips. All right, guys. I'm sure you feel like you've been browbeaten enough by us all, but this is 
the ultimate Briar Master. You guys are the eight finalists, and at this stage of the game, we would expect a lot more from you all. Ticker boys, beginning of the challenge, big smiles. Well, guys, keep smiling. You've just won the reward. Yes! Yes, <laughs> yes. yes man! Thank you. Yes, man! Congratulations, guys. Yeah. You have now won your fast forward into the 10th leg. Also, there is another reward for you, which will be disclosed when we get to the next leg. So well done, gentlemen. Which leaves me with the two teams that will be going into the elimination challenge tomorrow. Bushy's gone wild. You're the first team that's in the elimination. And Mix Masala, you are the other. Both of you will be going head to head tomorrow and only one team will come back from that elimination challenge and one team's journey will have come to an end. For the rest of you, consider yourselves lucky that we're not putting more people into the elimination challenge. You live to fight another day. Have a great night and you better start cooking out of your skins, otherwise you will be going home and will not make it into the final three. No, the only thing I do with the kids is going up against a friend. Biggest regret is going up against the bushes. But uh, it's because they are from our hometown. And there's two Durban teams against each other. So one Durban contestant is going home. Well, this is a game, regardless of friends or what. There is going to be one winner, and that's how it's going to be. So if we didn't perform well, we are suffering the consequences. Gee, was, hasn't this just been an unbelievable weekend? It's right in the Etosha. We're staying in an incredible place, Etosha Village. Yeah. And then we get treated to the most awesome bush dinner ever in a setting that you've got a 360 degree view around Etosha. I couldn't think of any way better but to finish off this meal with a beautiful glass of brandy. Good morning, Bushy's Gone Wild and Mix Masala. Good morning. Welcome to the Teleni Africa Desert Camp for the Elimination Challenge today. And I must just say to both teams, I didn't expect to see you here today. And it's very sad for me that I've got two Durban teams going head to head. Let me give you both a bit of advice. Yes, you may have become friends on the road, but today you really are fighting against each other. So cook out of your hearts here, cook out of your skin and make sure that you stay in the game. I'm sure you guys are itching to know what your challenge is this morning. You ready? All right, you will have just 15 minutes to prepare a folded omelet for the judges. One dish. That's all you have to do. All right, guys, there's a beautiful pick and pay breakfast pantry over there stocked with Robertson's herbs and spices. Mix masala, you are to the right. Bushy's gone wild, you are to my left. 15 minutes starts right now. We're going with a, a Bushy style omelette. <laughs> so we're playing it by feel. We just got everything in here, whatever we could just get our hands on. Guys, you're already three minutes into this challenge and I don't even see anyone whisking eggs, getting going. So let's get cracking, guys. Oh, you are going home. The time limit, the time frame, is the most challenging part. OK, come on, guys. You're both very good cooks. You've been in one elimination challenge before. You know the type of pressure you're in. Just slam this one. Right now, I'm just putting the egg on. I want this done. OK, I know it's terrible to be kicking out good friends, but if you don't, you're going home. OK, teams, you now only have five minutes left, and please welcome the judges. I hope that you give them a delicious folded omelette this morning because you know what's at stake here. Do not do this well. You will be going home. Five minutes is enough time. Basically, just toss our filling inside and fold the omelette over. I like a pale-coloured omelette, not too caramelised, not too dark, soft texture, but it must be moist. Delicious. Also, I don't like too many fillings in it. It's simple, it's a bit of parmesan cheese, or, you know, just really elegant and simple. I like the same, but mine, I don't put any filling in it. I just, I just put a little bit of salt, a little bit of lemon juice, and that is it. Come on. So, you pass me the spoon. Quick, 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 quick. It's sticking to the pan. A perfect omelette on time is quite hard. Because you know, you know what, I must tell you this, when you go for interviews at uh, some restaurants, the first thing they will give to you for a trial, they'll give you scrambled eggs or they'll give you an omelette to make because those are the most difficult things to make yeah. as a chef. 
OK, teams, you are down to your last two minutes. Who would have thought that your fate would depend on something as simple as an omelette prepared on a fire? Oh. The egg got stuck to the pan. I'm going to try and uh, make another one. OK, teams, you are down to your last 60 seconds. I hope you are ready plating up and about ready to serve the judges. 60 seconds. OK, we are now down to the last 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. Dry masters, bring in your omelettes. And if you were thinking that this as an elimination challenge is too easy, you would be 100% right. Dry masters, your next challenge, you will have 20 minutes and you will please prepare for us a poached egg hollandaise and you only have 20 minutes. Please serve the judges and your 20 minutes starts right now. I thought as much. I mean, the challenge for 50 minutes and then you go back to camp, nah, but too easy. Justin, just now tell us we have to produce a hollandaise, egg hollandaise. So, Petrus, let's have a look at mixed masala. That's like a full English breakfast, yeah? In an omelette. It looks like a cake crash, man. The eggs are nice and soft. Soft, yeah. Flavours are quite like a bit too many flavours, though. Let's have a look at the bush has gone wild. Lot less colour, smoked salmon and mushroom. And capers. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good combination, man. That is quite impressive. Huh? The omelette seems to be cooked fairly well. It's not a bad effort for these guys to start off with. Well, you got the effort at the poached egg. I mean, one poached egg only, yeah? But there's still egg there as well. All right. Justin, I'm a bit lost here with the... I know how to poach an egg, but what's a hollandaise? It's like hot mayonnaise. So it's like a... OK, so get uh, garlic and get onion. Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> Christian last night admitted he's never made a hollandaise sauce. So I'm quite excited about that. I haven't made it before, but I'm going to try. I am concerned about the bushes because they put at stuff like this as well. OK, teams, you're a quarter of the way through this part of the challenge. You now have 15 minutes left to deliver us a poached egg with a hollandaise sauce. Judges are waiting in anticipation, and you will be judged on your entire performance today. Let's get cracking. Not very good being pressurized, doing stuff for the first time. I suppose that's why it's called a challenge. Ah, uh, no. OK, teams, you now only have five minutes left, 15 gone by. These prime masters come up and serve the judges when your time is over. Hectic. Pressure is hectic. We decided to just toss a bit of ciabatta as well to go with it. Our hollandaise is done. I hope it tastes good, and I hope I did the right thing. Cooking blind, we don't know whether it's the right way or the wrong way. Amen. Slowly, slowly, slowly. It's looking good. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And one. That's it. Stop the clock. Gentlemen, please bring in your poached eggs and hollandaise sauce. I have yet another surprise, one of my personal favourites. Next, you will prepare for us a tin cup breakfast. That means an egg that is poached in a tin cup in a poiki pot with whatever fillings you would like to put inside. It's the last dish of the challenge. And you have 25 minutes for this part of the challenge, and your time starts right now. Another cup will just keep it there, right? Covering bacon. Bacon. So, Peter, from the Mix for Solid Boys, the Hollandaise, the consistency is just perfect. But I've got a problem with the acid and the seasoning. A little bit under-seasoned and not sort of acidic enough. Yeah. Let's have a look at the, at the Bushy Boys. So they've given us a slice of toast, and that makes sense because that toast will help soak up any moisture from the egg when it comes into the water. Mm. The eggs are slightly undercooked, but, but the acidity is good, and it seasons well. very well. Yeah. It's two and good efforts from both teams, huh? Yeah, it's quite frantic. Like, our lives depend on it. OK, mix masala and bushy's gone wild. You are down to your last five minutes. 
I pray for both your sakes that you don't give us a soggy mess with a hard-boiled egg on top because it could decide your fate in the game today. Five minutes left to go. It's almost there. I don't want to overcook it, like Justin said. Justin said he doesn't want a hard egg, so we can give him a soft egg. Uh, we've got three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes and then it's up. Our fate. All right, all teams, you are down to your last 60 seconds. Hope it's enough to make it count. From what I can see, both teams are in trouble here. Let's hope that these last 60 seconds make a difference to the breakfast that you're going to serve our judges. 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Dry masters, please bring the tin cup breakfast to the judges. Oh well, our fate is determined now. We've got a 50-50 chance anyway of getting through. I wasn't happy with the egg at all. Yeah. Too much water in there. Way too much water. So, Petrus, the, the guys are 25 minutes to prepare breakfast in a cup, yeah? Which is a lot, of, a lot, a lot of, time. of time, yeah? That's quite a bit of time. The bushy boys, you see how raw this egg is. I'm a bit wary of eating it, to be honest with I'm you. I'm not going to eat that, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's rough, dude. Yeah, it's, a, it's a clear time management issue, unfortunately. Any other comments, Petrus? No, no, <laughs> um, This is the offering from, uh, from Mix Masala. The, the egg looks, yeah. looks better cooked. Oh, there you go. Oh, better. Much better, Much look better. at that. Chili as usual, is that a pepper or chili? Uh, take a bit of both. Look at that, that's nice. Half a bar, new car, title. It's a serious prize to win, and it's worth fighting for. So, uh, we've had some good ones today, and we've had some bad ones. Welcome, Mix Masala and Bushy's Gone Wild to what could be your last time around the fire with me. You guys have been on the road together for five weeks now, become friends over this journey, spent a lot of time together, shared a lot of firsts. How does that all feel, Sherwin? The trip, the food, the experiences and the people wouldn't trade it in for the world. Suj, lots of new experiences for you on this journey. Yeah, the way what we did was what we normally do in what we do, we check in travel magazines and documentaries. It came true for us, and you couldn't ask for anything more. Zane, how are you feeling? This has been the best uh, few weeks of my life. The photos that we've taken on our phones, we'll never be able to give the full story what our eyes have seen. Pressure. I've made new friends, new family. It is a journey of a lifetime. Yesterday, a man challenge, the first real head-to-head -head challenges. And both teams standing here right now came into this challenge because of a poor performance yesterday. The elimination challenge gives you one chance to redeem yourselves. If you make a mistake here, your journey comes to an end. However, there is a silver lining for the losing team. Courtesy of shot left, here are 40,000 rands worth of weekends away for you guys to share as and when you want within a two hour radius of your hometown. So, without much further ado, let's run through the challenge that you all face today, challenge by challenge. First challenge, you had to prepare an omelette this morning and Bushy gone wild. You scored a five out of 10, not a great result. Mix masala, also scored a five out of 10. In the second one, you had to prepare poached egg with a hollandaise sauce and bushies. You guys scored a six out of 10. Mix masala, you scored a four out of 10, putting the bushies gone wild in the lead, which brought us to our last dish. It's the tin cup breakfast, something I created to enjoy around the fire with my friends, simple to do. And mix masala, you guys scored a five out of 10 for that breakfast. And sadly, Zane and Sherwin, you guys only scored one point, which means your epic journey of a lifetime has come to an end, gents. To come this far, it's, it's been a great achievement for us. I'm, I'm emotionally confused because, in a way, I'm sad that we are, our journey has ended. But I'm also happy to know that you know, I'm going back home to my family. 
And I'm sorry uh, to I'm see you. you an honorary pussy. Ah, thank you. <laughs> well done, James. Sorry to see you go, eh? Huh? When I came here, I was a bit harsh, raw, arrogant. Obviously created that uh, tension between some people who hated me or some people who still, some teams still hate me. Fancy. But um, it's, it's, it's changed me. It's given me a broader aspect of life. There's so much in life to appreciate other than just what we have in front of us. Yes, we, want, uh, we wanted the half a million rand, the car, the title, everything else. But it turned out to be much more than that. I mean, we made friends, we got friendships, we got memories, and we've got things that we can never take away. Like, we could never afford our own strength yeah, to, do to this. go and do stuff like this. And my passport got a stamp in it. Yeah, it's his <laughs> first time ever leaving South Africa, so big ups to that. <laughs>